Here, how to save your fish uh, almost every time by adding stuff and without having to learn anything. The most common approach to fish diseases is just to put medicine in the water with the fish. That's all people want to do. Just how do I treat it? What do I put in the water? I see this problem. What do I put in the water? And I've spent over 20 years trying to get people to be better at the hobby and learn what they're doing and to prevent future disease outbreaks, what they're doing wrong. Uh, that educational objective has been an absolute fail, though. To this day, most people just want to put medicine in the water. Come on, what do I treat it with? And so in this protocol, all you do is add stuff from new water to heat, pH buffer, a little more room, some salt, and API's general cure. That's literally it. That will save 97% of fish, and all you're doing is adding stuff. And while I'll spare you as much learning as possible, I do need to provide you with more details on specifically how to add the above stuff. So here's how to save most fish without absorbing any facts or getting better at the hobby at all. At the conclusion of this tutorial, you will have salvaged your fish alive and healthy until they leave the hospital facility and go back into the main tank, which continues to have the problems that we didn't test for. The following protocol does not apply to marine fish. It does not apply to very large fish that would be inappropriately housed in a small hospital facility, although the protocol can be scaled upward to any size facility you want or could afford to treat. API's general cure is kind of expensive, so treating in 5,000 gallons could be a thing. Let's go through the steps. Step one. Obtain a 10-gallon or larger container that can be heated and covered. And for best results, ensure that the hospital facility is at least one gallon of water for one inch of fish. That would correct crowding. And without understanding why, if it turns out your hospital facility is larger than your main facility, then you just accidentally learned that your fish are overcrowded, and that may be all that's wrong with them. But on to step two. Fill the container within two inches of the top with tap water. Step three, apply dechlorinator. Step four, install a sponge filter powered by an air pump with a small heater. Use 100 watts per 10 gallons to achieve a temperature of 78 degrees in the hospital facility. The sponge filter specifically is much more important and more of a boon to this protocol than you should even bother to learn. Just do it. Buy a spray of silk plants to put into the hospital facility to provide the fish with much needed cover, also known as a hide, to minimize the impact of stress and crowding. Bioseed this hospital facility from your existing facility. Bioseeding is the transfer of bioactive organics and beneficial bacteria from your existing donor system to the new sponge filtration system. Sponge filters lend themselves especially well to this technology. Not so much hang-ons or canisters. Now, somebody might point out that when you use filter uh, junk or filter squeezings from the donor system that's sick, you're putting that into the hospital facility, but keep in mind, we're going to be treating the hospital facility shortly. In the hospital facility, you'll need to regulate pH to a species-appropriate level. So without learning about pH, this is how you do that. So goldfish and just about all the bread and butter species of fish in the franchise pet stores like PetSmart are also acclimated to neutral. South American tetras, cichlids, barbs, South American discus, catfish, oscars, and most other South American fish will need a pH of around 6.8 to neutral, but they will do fine, and you could use a neutral regulator, 7.0. On the other hand, African cichlids, mollies, guppies, brackish water fish, gobies, monos, scats, most live bearers and many other African species appreciate a slightly higher pH, and you could use African cichlid buffer. Just follow label instructions. For the most part, you will have addressed a pH problem without really understanding it. And sadly, this will not prepare you to manage pH 
back in the main system when the fish go back in. But that would be a departure from just adding medicine to the water, which is the stated goal here. Having done all of the above, you will have created a suitable hospital facility of at least one gallon of water per inch of fish with an appropriate pH for the species with some foliage cover for the fish, well aerated by and filtering it with a sponge filter that has been cycled from the existing system, the water dechlorinated and heated to 78 degrees. You have a hospital facility that's suitable for 97% of all weak or sick fish. In there, I need you to feed freeze-dried krill in sparing amounts two times daily, which has been crunched down to a size that is appropriate for the fish you have in the facility. And now you know how to make a suitable hospital facility without a shred of understanding as to why it all functions together so beautifully to save fish. Now it's time to move the fish. I kind of think you should run the hospital overnight, let things clear up a little bit. The next morning after bioseeding, you'll see the sponge filter has clarified the water to crystal. Check the temperature in the existing system and check the water temperature in your hospital facility to make sure that they are within 5 degrees Fahrenheit of each other. It may be that the main system is far too cold, which was the problem in the first place. But we didn't want to test anything. We just wanted to add things to the water. So you may have just accidentally learned that the water in your main system is too cold. For the best health of the fish, and I'm talking goldfish, cichlids, neons, gobies, monoscats, bettas, everything. You can get away with 78 degrees and the fish will generally be healthier. Move affected fish from the mother system to the hospital facility. The best way to accomplish this would be to net the fish into a bowl or cup and move them over and slowly dip the hospital water into the cup, mixing gradually with the mother water and then after a minute or three, go ahead and let the fish go into the hospital system. Watch the first fish you transfer for about 15 minutes to make sure that there's no shock. If all goes well with the first fish, you can move the remainder into the hospital tank. Chances are the fish will immediately improve in the hospital facility because the pH in the hospital facility is not crashed down to 6 like it is in the main system, meaning that a crashed pH in the main system was the whole problem the whole time but recall, the goal was not to test anything, just to add stuff. While the fish are in the proper pH in the spacious hospital system, there's a good chance that they will just get stronger and stronger until you move them back into the main system with the crash pH. Gosh, if we were only willing to test the pH. I would prefer that you leave no fish in the main system, as they may harbor parasites in waiting from the hospital uh for when they come back from the hospital system, the, any fish left in the main system may still have parasites. And when they come back from the hospital system, they will just reacquire the parasites. So if you move fish from the main system into the hospital system, they'll all get treated. But if you leave fish in the main system, you will not have corrected their pH issues either, old water quality issues, trematodes, or potentiated their recovery from bacterial infections. In other words, while you have blindly improved literally everything for the fish that go into the hospital tank, you will have corrected nothing for the remaining fish in the main system. And not understanding the impact and value of a proper pH, new water, high aeration and sponge filtration, bioseeding, and the effective temperature on the immune system, the fish in the main system will not be receiving any benefit at all. So, in a spacious hospital facility under high aeration and sponge filtration, Recently bioseeded, dechlorinated water with a proper pH, plant material for cover, no stress at 78 degrees, the fish are ready for treatment. That is simply salt at 0.3% and API's general cure, which is a combination of proxyquantal and metronidazole. And what these two compounds treat is immaterial. We don't want to know stuff. We just want to add things. But this compound uh, combination of therapies addresses a multitude of pathogens and will exert complete control of 90 plus percent of pathogenic issues without endangering the fish. So as far as the salt is concerned, please follow the instructions on salt that's available at my website, drjohnson.com. Uh, the nuts and the bolts of that regimen involve the addition of a total dose of three teaspoons of non-iodized salt per one gallon of water but that dose divided over the course of 36 hours. 
Only in systems containing no live plants and no wild-caught South American catfish. As far as the API general cure, follow label instructions, and for the purposes of this treatment and sparing you the science behind the interval, all I need you to do would be to apply the medicine every other day for three treatments. That total treatment period is six days, and that's plenty to eliminate hexameda and trematodes and cestodes and so on. So without understanding why the fish are recovering, they will strengthen, feed them per their species requirement, or feed freeze-dried krill, which is eagerly accepted and highly nutritious. Keep them in the hospital facility at 78 degrees with a properly buffered pH and a highly functioning air-driven sponge filtration system and under that elixir of salt and general cure until they are strong and then move them back into the main facility. If parasites were suspected in the main system, you have two options. You can treat the main system with the salt and general cure, or you can leave the main system fish free for two weeks at 78 degrees Fahrenheit, meaning that you will have deprived the parasites of their food and thereby extincted them. That's true. But either way, you should keep the fish in the hospital system with the salt for two weeks. Make sure that the parasites have expired. On return to the main facility, which is conceivably smaller than the hospital facility, they may be too cold, the pH may be too low, parasites may still exist. They may have too little foliage cover, high levels of background pollution for lack of water changes. That may exist without adequate filtration, water changes, or aeration, which makes illness an inevitable recurrence. But the hospital facility will always be there, bubbling along at a neutral pH with superior filtration and aeration at 78 degrees as an appropriate environment for, to recover the fish if they fail again. I put together a materials list. It's available over at drjohnson.com in the resources section and in the uh, description under this video. Um, I do want to add, though, that I cannot help but mention that anyone keeping fish as pets should, whenever possible, enjoy, uh, employ a trickle water replacement system. Your luck with pet fish will be immeasurably improved, and the fish will seem bulletproof. Basically, with a trickle water replacement system, all you're doing is running replacement water uh, constantly as a trickle. So you always maintain low levels of background pollution, pH is always stable, water temperature is always stable, and the water is always fresh. I also want to apologize for the sarcasm in this protocol. It's a good protocol and it works very well, but it is engineered around people who don't want to test or know things. They just want to do stuff. So it's a step-by-step how-to, and it'll work. And maybe you picked up a few things along the way, like the value of 78 degrees and a neutral pH. I appreciate it. Thanks.